next to each other, right? Mm -hmm. So, I hope you guys are a good time. Um, one kind of adjustment to the question here is that all of our songs are in the Green Book instead of the other song. So the numbers are correct, but the book that we're working on is the Green Book. So. Can we start with me on page 77? So sorry, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, bear with me. So we have this one. So be two forty nine. Most merciful God, we confess, confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and meet us, so that we may be light in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ is given to die for you, and for his sake, God 
forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God, and he sows on them the Holy Spirit. Oh, Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer it here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. On to page 81. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. <laughs> Then the Lord said, Because the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and their sin is very great, I will go down to see whether they have done altogether according to the outcry that has come to me. And if not, I will know. So the men turned from their turned from there and went toward Sodom, but Abraham still stood before the Lord. Then Abraham drew near and said, Will you indeed sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there are fifty righteous within the city. Will you then sweep away the place and not spare it for the fifty righteous who are in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to put the righteous to death with the wicked, so that the righteous fare as the wicked. Far be that from you. 
Shall not the judge of all the earth do what is just? And the Lord said, If I find that Sodom could be righteous in the city, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Abraham answered and said, Behold, I have undertaken to speak to the Lord. I, who am but dust and ashes, suppose by the fifty righteous are lacking. Will you destroy the whole city? For I replied, and he said, I will not destroy it. If I find forty-five there, again he spoke to him and said, Suppose forty are found there. He answered, For the sake of forty, I will not do it. Then he said, O oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak. Suppose thirty are found there. He answered, I will not do it. If I find thirty there, he said, Behold, I have undertaken to speak to the Lord. Suppose twenty are found there. He answered, For the sake of twenty, I will not destroy it. Then he said, O oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak again. But this once, suppose ten are found there. He answered, For the sake of ten, I will not destroy it. And the Lord went, went his way, when he had finished speaking to Abraham, and Abraham returned to his place. Psalm 138 I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down before your holy temple and praise your name because of your love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I call you, you All the kings of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing the ways of the Lord. Though the Lord be high, he cares for the lowly. He perceives the haughty from the bar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. The Lord will make good his purpose for me. O Lord, your love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. The second reading is from Colossians, beginning with chapter 2. Therefore, as you receive Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit, according to the human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have been filled in him, who is the head of all rule and authority. In him also you were circumcised, and with a circumcision made without hands, by putting off the body of the flesh, by the circumcision of Christ, having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God, who raised him from the dead. And you, who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all of our trespasses, by canceling the record of death that stood against us with its legal demands. This he set aside, nailing him to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing, triumphing over them in him. Therefore, Therefore, let no one pass judgment on you in question of food and drink, or with regard to a festival, or a new moon, or a Sabbath. These are a shadow of the things to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Let no one disqualify you, insisting on asceticism and worship of angels, going on its detail about visions puffed up without reason by his sensuous mind and not holding fast to the head, from whom the whole body, nourished and knit together through its joints and ligaments, grows with a growth that is from God.
Gospel according to St. Luke, the 11th chapter. Now Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. And he said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone who is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation. And he said to them, Which of you who has a friend will go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine has arrived on a journey, and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within, Do not bother me. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, though he will not get up and give you anything because he is his friend, yet because of his impudence, he will rise and give him whatever he seeks or needs. And I tell you, ask and it will be given to you, seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks it will be opened. What father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will instead of a fish give him a serpent? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Gospel of the Lord. Today's sermon was actually written uh, by Tim Zingal, and then there is a portion that the Lord's Prayer dramatization that Rod's been helping with, and that was by Clyde Lee Heron. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, or Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. I have chosen this morning to look at part of our gospel lesson this morning, the part concerning what has become known as the Lord's Prayer. This prayer has become something that is prayed at time without thinking what we are saying. And to help us understand how misunderstood this prayer has become, I would like to read to you this morning a dramatization of this prayer. Someone is praying the Lord's Prayer and God breaks into answer. Our Father, who art in heaven, sorry. That's my partner. My partner. Uh, I apologize. That's very good. Our Father, who art in heaven. Yes. Don't interrupt me. I'm praying. But you called. Called you. I didn't call you. I'm praying. Our Father, who art in heaven. There. You did it again. Did what? Called me. You said our Father, who art in heaven, here I am, what's on your mind? I didn't mean anything by it. I was, you know, just saying my prayers for the day. I always say the Lord's Prayer. It makes me feel good. Kind of like getting my duty done. All right, go on. Hallowed be thy name. Hold it. What do you mean by that? By what? By hallowed be thy name. It means, it means, good grief. I don't know what it means. How should I know? It's just part of the prayer. By the way, what does it mean? It means honor, holy, wonderful. Hey, that makes sense. I never thought about what Hallowed meant before. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Do you really mean that? Sure, why not? What are you going to do about it? Do? Nothing, I guess. I just think it would be neat if you got control of everything down here like you have up there. Have I got control of you? Well, I go to church. That isn't what I asked you. What about the habit of lust you have? You have, you're in your bad temper. You've really got a problem there, you know. And then there's that way you spend your money all on yourself. And what about the kind of books you read? Stop picking on me. I'm just as good as some of the rest of those phonies in church. Excuse me? I thought you were praying for my will to be done. If that is to happen, it will have to start 
with the ones who are free and free, like you, for example. Oh, all right. I guess I do have some hang-ups. Now that you mention it, I could probably name some others. So could I. I haven't thought about it until now, but I really would like to cut out some of those things. I'd like to, you know, be really free. Good. You know, we're getting somewhere. We'll work together, you and I. We have some victories that can truly be won. I'm proud of you. Look, Lord, I need to finish up here. This is taking a lot longer than it usually does. Give us this day our daily bread. You need to cut down on the bread, too. You're overweight as it is. Hey, wait a minute. What is this, criticize me day? Here I was doing my religious duty, and all of a sudden you break in and remind me of all my hang-ups. Praying is a dangerous thing. You could wind up changing, you know. That's, that's what I'm trying to get across to you. You called me, and here I am. It's too late to stop now. Keep on praying. I'm interested in the next part of your prayer. Well, go on. I'm scared to. Scared of what? I know what you'll say. Try not to see. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. What about Sally? See, I knew it. I need to bring her up. Why, she's told lies about me, cheated me out of money. She never paid back that debt she owes me. I've sworn to get even. But your prayer. What about your prayer? I didn't mean it. Well, at least you're honest. It's not too much fun carrying a load of beer in your inside, is it? No, but I'll feel better as soon as I get even. Boy, have I made some plans for old Sally. She'll wish she never did me any harm. You won't feel any better. You'll feel worse. Revenge isn't sweet. Think how unhappy you are already. But I can change all that. You can? How? Forgive Sally today, and then I'll forgive you. Then the hate and sin will be Sally's problem and not yours. You may lose the money, but you will sell it in your heart. But Lord, I can't forgive Sally. Then I can't forgive you. Oh, you're right. You always are. And more than I want revenge on Sally, I want to be right with you. All right, I forgive her. Help her find the right road in life, Lord. <clears throat> Help her find the right road in life, Lord. She's bound to be awfully miserable. Now that I think about it, some way, somehow, show her the right way. There now. How do you feel? Hmm. Not bad. Not bad at all. In fact, I feel pretty great. You know, I don't think I'll have to go to bed up tight tonight for the first time since I can't remember. Maybe I won't be so tired from now on because I'm not getting enough rest. You're not through with your prayer. Go on. Oh, all right. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Good. Good. I'll do that. Just don't put yourself in a place where you can be tempted. What do you mean by that? Quit hanging around in the wrong places, watching inappropriate movies and television, listening to sinful conversations, getting into compromised situations, change some of the friendships. Some of your so-called friends are beginning to get to you. They'll have to be completely involved in the wrong thing for more time. Don't be fun. They advertise for having fun, but if you but for you it would be ruined. Don't use me for the escape hatch. I don't understand. Sure you do. You've done it lots of times. You get caught in a bad situation, you get into trouble, and then you come right to me. Lord, help me out of this mess, and I promise I'll never do it again. Remember some of those bargains you tried to make with me? Yes, <clears throat> and I'm ashamed, Lord. I really am. Which bargains are you remembering? Well, when the woman next door saw me backing away from the neighborhood bar, I told my husband I was going to the store. I remember telling you, Lord, don't let her tell my husband where I've been. I promise I'll be in church every Sunday. She didn't tell your husband, but you didn't keep the promise, did you? I'm sorry, Lord, I really am. Up until now, I thought if I just prayed the Lord's Prayer every day, that I could do what I liked. I didn't expect anything to happen like it did. Go ahead, finish your prayer. Oh, yes. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Do you know what would bring you glory? What would make you really happy? No, but I'd like to know. I want to please you. I can see what a mess I've made out of my life, and I can see how great it would be to really be one of your followers. You just answered the question. I did? Yes. The one thing that would bring me glory is to have people like you truly love me, and I can see that's happening between us. Now that some of these old sins are exposed and out of the way, well, there's no telling what we can do together. Lord, let's see what we can make of me, okay? Yes, let's see. Have you ever thought of praying the Lord's Prayer in that light? 
What would God say or is saying as you pray that prayer? Have you forgiven others of their sins to you? Have you been staying out of places and things that are tempting? Do you trust in God to provide for you as you pray, give us this day our daily bread? Do you believe that the kingdom of God is now on this earth and it is coming because of you? As you pray the Lord's Prayer, do you expect to be changed, forgiven, and blessed? If we truly stop and think about what we are praying for in the Lord's Prayer, it is truly a powerful prayer, a perfect prayer, a prayer that does handle all the aspects of our lives. And notice that this prayer is not a selfish prayer. It does not pray for your needs alone, but prayers for the needs of all people whenever we pray it. You cannot say the Lord's Prayer and even once say I. You cannot pray the Lord's Prayer and even once say my. Nor can you say pray the Lord's Prayer and not pray for another. For when you ask for daily bread, you must include your brother. For others are included in each and every plea from the beginning to the end of it. It does not once say me. The Lord's Prayer is an all-inclusive prayer as we pray it. For it does not just see my life in reference to God, but your life and others' lives too. Have you thought about how the Lord's Prayer is used in our worship service on Communion Sundays? Where does it come in? How is it used? I need your paper up, sorry. Right, sorry. The Lord's Prayer is prayed just before we come to Communion as a meal prayer. It is said before communion, as we would pray a prayer of grace before we sit down to eat. It's the most perfect meal prayer, grace prayer, as it lets us pray for all of life before we eat and drink from the Lord's table. The perfect table prayer. The Lord's prayer is an inclusive prayer, a non-selfish prayer, a grace prayer. The perfect prayer for us to use to develop our lives with God through Jesus Christ. Our Father, who art in heaven. Yes. Amen.
Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Page 195. <laughs> Thank you.